Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to Green Acre Homestead. Welcome back to the next series of the Storage Shed to Soap Shack Conversion Playlist. And in this video, we're gonna take along the journey of putting electricity officially on the Soap Shack. What I mean by that is this video is gonna cover the entire service entrance or main electric juiceness of this whole project where the Soap Shack ties into the power feed that feeds my workshop and becomes a legitimate electrified building of work. Before we get rocking and rolling on this video, I want to make an obvious disclaimer. There it is. I'm not a professional. I'm not an electrician. I'm not an electrologist. I didn't go to school for juiceology, and I'm just a guy showing you some DIY projects that we're doing here on our home. That being said, I feel fully confident in the skill sets that I do. I'm doing a project that I'm comfortable with, but I'm not going to present this as a how-to and educational video. There are plenty of other people out there, much more knowledgeable than I, who actually did go to a school of electricology, who are better teachers at this than I would be. That being said, let's go. I chose to do an outdoor sub panel to simplify the installation and maximize interior space inside the soap shed. This was also important because this sub panel will be feeding not only the soap shed, but also my workshop. It's much easier to manage the one and a half inch conduit and connections outside of the structure rather than drilling holes and routing everything indoors to just turn around and take it back outside. No, 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 I know. This pipe goes. Here, you hold this. Go ahead and push it inside. All right, I'm gonna put some glue on this, Elijah. Whenever I tell you, you gotta push this into this piece, okay? Okay. That it? Yeah. All right, good job. Is that rain? 
think so. All right, can't have the camera in the rain. Before you ever start any project on your property where you're digging in the ground, do yourself a favor and check with the local utility companies to make sure you don't inadvertently sever a fiber optic cable. That's the most expensive thing I could think of, but there's a lot of other things that aren't as expensive, but it's still a headache. Here in the United States, it's actually the law that you call and have all your utilities located before you dig in the ground. We have already done that with our entire property. We have been on this property since it was nothing but a field, and therefore we know exactly where every single thing is placed, run, located, dug, buried, and everything. In the US, 811 is a free service provided by utilities because they don't want you cutting their lines as much as you don't want to be cutting their lines. So definitely give them a call and do that before you start digging because it could definitely save your bacon in the end. We rented a trencher from the hardware store and used it to dig new trenches for the soap shed. While we had the rental, we also dug a trench for a water line to the greenhouse. So some clips will show the yard carnage in the background, but we'll have a separate video on the greenhouse water line at a later date. When it came time for us to pull up the workshop power line, we had our work cut out for us. The power lines run under part of the driveway that has years of road bond, gravel, and compaction that all work together to make the digging back breaking. Thankfully, I went overboard on the wire gauge when I built my workshop about five and a half years ago. Because of this, we can safely add in Angela's soap shed to this whole system without fear of overloading the wires or the circuits. The original wire used to power my workshop is what's called mobile home service entrance wire and is fully capable of running everything we're throwing at it plus more.
that was an adventure. I guess you could call it that. We used the power of the winch on the four-wheeler to pry the conduit out of ground. Out of forced it to our wheel. It only broke once. Maybe twice. Twice. It broke at the joints. Yeah. So the weak part was the joints, which is obvious. Normal. So now it is out of the way enough, and I can continue with the trencher, bringing it from behind the shed and around to kind of tie in line here of the driveway. And we can keep on rocking and rolling, I guess. Let's fire up the trencher and you can finish. I'm gonna go sit back with a sweet tea. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go use my new uh, can coolie from Woodhaven. We just opened that box today. Woo! We don't check our PO box that much and I think it was sitting there two weeks. So. Sorry. Sorry, Daryl. <laughs> anyway, let's go. We're running out of daylight. Okay. The boys back there jump in the ditch. One of you viewers asked us, and I'm sure a lot of people have wondered, Sam, you're talking about piggybacking off your workshop power to power a soap shed with its own lights and circuits and hot water heater. Did you overwire your shop that much? Maybe. <laughs> I wired my shop with 100 amp mobile home feeder cable because go big or go home. When you're home, you go big. We just cut the wire, so my workshop is abandoned. Anyway, let's wire this up quick so I can revive the shop and do some CPR electrical work. Let's go. With the power cables in the trench and backfield, it was finally time to wire up the sub panel for the soap shed and officially juice it up. It took a little time working the large gauge wiring into the panel and in an orderly fashion, but otherwise it was a very smooth installation that didn't take too long. The workshop was wired up to the panel off camera, but in the exact same fashion, meaning come in in a separate conduit run on the left side of the panel and then to a dedicated properly sized 240 volt circuit. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video of the, you know, kind of high level overview, but still taking you through all the bits and pieces of what it took to bring power to Angela's Soap Shack. If you are just catching this one video, but you're interested in any other bits and pieces that you've seen or that have yet to be shown, there's a link to the full build playlist down below. We go through this entire project step by step and have dedicated videos for every piece along the way. Definitely do yourself a favor and check it out if you're interested and you kind of want to know what really goes into converting a storage shed into a home office or honestly a livable structure. Leave us a comment or question down below if you have it. We love reading every single one and we try to respond to as many as possible. Otherwise, take care and we'll see you guys next time on the homestead.